I'm Greg Hunter. Welcome to USAWatchdog.com. With us, an analyst and a trader. Uh, he runs the uh, very popular website, TradersChoice.net. He's also a friend of mine, spoiler alert. It, of course, is Gregory Manorino. Gregory Manorino, thanks for joining us today on USAWatchdog.com. Thanks for having me back, Greg. I, I love your show. I love being on it. Thank you. Yesterday, James Comey, I got to bring this uh, this out, uh, and I know it plays in. You told me in the off camera that this it definitely plays in about his announcement not to prosecute Hillary Clinton. Uh, I never tweet, and I tweeted out that James Comey should uh, resign now and stop masquerading as a law enforcement chief. He has disgraced the separate disgraced the FBI and himself, and he should step down. This is outrageous. Uh, he's in his press conference. He's in his prepared statement. Uh, she's got multiple servers and and scolded Hillary Clinton. I guess that's supposed to substitute for some charges, which there should be many. This is outrageous. What does this tell you about the financial system and where we are in this arc that's uh, going on right now with uh, this uh, and what, what everybody says is coming collapse? Here we go, Greg. I think people need to just do a little research into the rise and fall of empires. This is a, a cycle and, and we're seeing several pieces fall directly into place right now here in the United States with regard to the political system, the financial system that we have seen over and over and over again. Um, just to summarize real quick, again, there is a particular cycle or a lifespan of an empire. Um, again, urge people to do their own research here. At the at the top of every empire, there are several elements that, without exception, are always there. And we're seeing that right here in the United States at this time. There is an issue with the financial system. There is also another one with the political system, which becomes absolutely corrupt. Again, don't take Greg Marino's word for it. Just people out there, pay attention to what's going on. Just look at history, and you will see this over and over and over again. History is replete with this, um, and it's very sad that that is what why this announcement came today. Again, this is political corruption um, playing into our our financial system, which not just here in the United States, Greg, which globally. Uh, is 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 flashing red across the sky, um, and how do people know this is happening? Again, let's let's look at what's going on right now. Well, hold on, hold on, just a minute. Do you think Comey was threatened, or you think somebody, some Wall Street types, came over and said, "Hey, listen, if you indict Hillary Clinton, uh, the whole thing, uh, you know, falls down like a big chain of dominoes." Do you want to be responsible for that? I mean, something went on. Went on. There, I heard Rudolph Giuliani say he could count—I don't know—a dozen different charges that Hillary Clinton could get put on her, and we have no uh, prosecution from Comey. And then this meeting between uh, Lynch and uh, and uh, Bill Clinton on uh, you know out in Arizona—a happenstance, a coincidence meeting, which I think. Total corrupt. Do you think that he was told, don't indict her or the whole system goes down? Oh, I am more than certain that's a, that is what he was told. But I'm not, I'm not convinced that he's saying that because the whole system will go down. I think they are well aware that the whole system is going down as we are talking. Uh, it has nothing to do. Look, the collapse of empires uh, is upon us. All right. Forget about what's going on in the stock market, what's happening on the debt market. We are seeing a phenomenon, Greg, which to me could not, not be more crystal clear. Something I've been screaming about for the longest time. Uh, it just boils down to, again, we are in an environment we globally have never seen before with regard to what's happening here in the United States with the corruption in, the, in, in politics. We've seen that before. We've seen problems in the financial system before. Again, every every great empire, we at, right at the top, these are the two key elements that appear. Financial system uh, on the edge, political corruption, trying to patch it all together. So, so again, that that is something that we've seen all over, all over and over throughout history. It's re, history is replete with it. But what we are seeing now, Greg, is something we're in uncharted territory, and it's occurring right under everybody's nose. Barely anyone is aware of what's going on because it's not getting any media coverage. That is this 
phenomenon. Again, people, do your own research. Don't take my word for it. A phenomenon where trillions in currency is being moved or, or, or rushing towards the debt market that is squeezing um, bond yields to historic lows. We have made history here in the United States for the second week in a row, uh, and it's getting almost no media coverage. I'm talking about the bond market, the 30-year bond. Last week, we hit a historic low with regard to yield. Just yesterday, same thing again. We hit another low. We're seeing this flattening yield curve here in the United States. The U.S. 10 years also had a historic low. People are so desperate. Institutions are so desperate right now. They're willing to accept negative returns. This is how desperate they are. The German booned um, the 10-year, the hit a historic low, paying negative 0.18. The 30-year boom, also historic low, paying negative 0.34. This is, I can't stress this enough, the biggest red flag that I can possibly imagine that we are on the cusp of some, some event um, that is going to change the landscape of the world. And I mean literally change the landscape of the world, Greg. Um, you have a couple of charts there. Uh, that I had sent you. Yeah, hold on uh, just a minute. Uh, uh, before we go into that, though, uh, let me yeah. uh, let me ask you one question. Why do you think? And I got the charts right here. Uh, mm -hmm. And I want to. I'll hold them up in just a second. Why do you think people are running into negative interest rates? Why are they so desperate that they'll take? Uh, you give me a hundred dollars, and we'll give you back ninety nine. Why will they take that? What? Why are they that desperate? Greg, the financial system again. We've seen this over and over again with the fall of empires throughout history um, is just as corrupt as the political system is. It's, it's not real. The whole thing is absolutely fake, Greg, and I want to talk about that moving forward as well. But again, beyond any shadow of any doubt, anyone who understands even the slightest bit of, of, of um, economics or finance has to, has to know, and, and none more so in world central banks that the system cannot continue to function in this environment in a negative rate environment um, here in the United States and it's not getting any media coverage the the Federal Reserve has just bailed out the banks again how do we know this occurred Greg again it's flying under the radar no one's talking about it since the crash of 2008, the Federal Reserve has required the banks to hold excess cash in reserve, just in case of an economic shock. Well, what happened last week? Well, the Federal Reserve said, hey, you know, your banks are doing fine. Don't worry about it. So now you can take those excess cash reserves and start buying back shares of your own stock to the tune of tens of billions. The Federal Reserve is not telling these banks to take this cash and invest in projects to, to help the economy to create jobs. No, they're telling them to buy back shares of their own stock. Why? It's a backdoor bailout. The banks cannot function in this environment, Greg. That's all this is. We know what's going on in the EU, the Italian banks as well. They're, look, despite what the World Central so, Bank... Wait, wait, so, wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, they are afraid that there's going to be a banking calamity, and they want to try to push up the banks. This is why they're telling them to buy their stock back. This is, this, is this the reason why they're doing that? Because they're afraid of a, a coming banking calamity. If you look at Deutsche Bank and look at the Italian banks, they're all in deep trouble. Some of the French banks, the Satander Bank, also in trouble. Uh, is that why they're telling banks to buy their stock back? Is that a tip off that big, big trouble's coming? Well, I think they're trying to prop up the market. They, what are they doing? The Federal Reserve, has decided to take the financial sector, the largest part of the market, and put a bottom under it and push it higher to try to pull the stock market with it. Let me explain to people out here um, some, some, a very basic concept. We keep hearing about liquidity, the, 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 the system, liquidity. The system is completely illiquid. And I want people to do a little bit of research and take them one second. In fact, they can open up another window as they are watching this video so, so I can prove something to them. Go to the Federal Reserve's own website, federalreserve.org. In their search, put total amount of currency in circulation. If you don't feel like doing that, I will tell you. 
the total amount of actual cash that's printed that, that, that you can hold in your hand in circulation around the world is 1.4 trillion dollars 1.4 trillion the rest of it is just credit and debt so what does that mean um, so the 19 no, the 19 point you know two three four almost 20 trillion dollars so they have 1 yeah. point trillion in real cash and then what you have is uh, is nearly 20 trillion in in basically uh, debt units well yes uh, if you want to talk about the national debt you want to add unfunded liabilities we're over 100 trillion so how can this ever be paid back we have 1.4 trillion in actual cash. That's all that exists on the earth, not just in the United States, on the earth. Okay, how is it? How can 1.4 trillion in actual cash pay ever pay back this debt? Look, Greg. Let me put another perspective on this for people that are listening. According to, again, do your own research, not Greg Manorino. Uh, any research that you want to do, the commercial banks right here in the United States apparently say. That they have 11 plus trillion in deposits from people like you and me and people that are watching this. So how could they have 11 trillion in deposits when there only exists 1.4 trillion dollars on the entire earth? Okay, it's a it's a liquidity problem. The banks are 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 illiquid. The banks are um, I don't know another word to put this, Greg, but they're insolvent. They're absolutely insolvent. They don't have the cash. So. You can understand where this is all going and why are we seeing this phenomenon. This is a global phenomenon that we have never seen before. Cash moving into the debt market like this, uh, it's unprecedented in history and it's getting no media coverage. You're going to hear a little bit here, a little bit there. Oh, the bond yield is doing this. But it gets glossed over because people are being distracted. Oh, look at the stock market. Don't look at the bond market. The bond market, Greg, as you well know, is where all the action starts. And it bleeds off to everything else. Every single asset, I don't care what it is, gets derives value from what's happening in the bond market. So the bond market right now could not be flashing red any brighter than it is right now. But we can look someplace else, Greg. We can look at what's happening to the price action of gold and silver since the beginning of this year. They have both taken off like rockets and they're not going to stop. This environment is on the edge. It plays right into it of the, with the political corruption that is occurring right now. Again, the fall of empires, Greg. Do a little research, people. We've seen this before with regard to the fall of empires, but we have never seen this move here into debt where, where investors are willing to take negative returns. Like you said before, uh, this is how desperate they are, how afraid they are that the financial system is teetering on the edge. Look, these banks are insolvent. We understand what's happening in the EU. The, the European banks are getting destroyed in this negative rate environment. There's going to be a bailout for them, too. No doubt it's coming. But what is this going to do? It dilutes the currency. Let me, let me put another perspective on this for you, if you want. So, Let's wait, wait. That's why, that's why gold and silver are taken off. Because people, it's a fear trade. They're like, they, they saw the same chart you did. Wow, $11 trillion in deposits in the U.S. and only $1.4 trillion uh, in actual cash. Oh, my gosh, they'll never be able to pay that if we have a calamity. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that these are monetary metals. People refer to these as precious metals. They are monetary metals. Um, they are real money. They have been real money for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And no central banker is going to make it different just by saying that they're not money, like Ben Bernanke has said to Ron Paul a while back. Um, look, the system is a liquid. The banks are insolvent. The only way they can, and they, the only way they can prolong this is by again adding digits to a screen or printing cash out of thin air. But all that will do is again put a temporary bottom under this because every extra bill that they add to a digital screen or print out of thin air devalues the currency. Either way, we are going to face a crisis unlike anything that has ever been seen in world history and that goes back greg to those charts that i sent you earlier uh, let me let me uh, hold them up for you and I, i'll just uh, uh, hold this up for i'm gonna take the full screen here this is the debt level uh you can uh, it's on the screen it's when you send me it says 16 uh a point four trillion but that's uh, 2010 it's nearly 20 trillion but you get the idea here this this big big hockey stick that's the debt level and then just to, and i know you're going to make this point so let me just go ahead and bring this on over this is this this dates back this dates back to like you know uh 1050 this chart 
And then you see for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years when you had real metal, real money, they mined a little more, they mined a little more, and then we went into this debt system, which, you know, the Federal Reserve's at the center of, and then we get this, this hockey stick. So you get the popul you get the debt exploding, and r right here, the debt explodes, but the population also explodes right along, and I got them overlaid here, right along with the debt. Mm -hmm. The population explodes, the debt explodes. There's the debt-based system. There's the population going straight up. What's going to happen to this chart uh, when when the, everything blows up and they can't add any more debt to the system? Greg, I've been warning people about this for years now. In fact, I'm pro I think I'm the first person to have ever brought this to public attention, I'll be honest with you, and probably the only person anywhere that is trying to and how bad the situation is. The chart you have there is with, with regard to U.S. debt, and you're right, it's a little bit behind the times. But if you were to look at any other uh, a country on Earth that has a debt-based economic model, and they all do, they all have the same hockey stick pattern with regard to the explosion of debt, which has caused a population boom. Now, understand, if we did not, I want people to pay attention, if if we were not able to access all of this cash from the future, again, this debt-based economic model functions by continually borrowing from the future to not just sustain the now, again, but to foster an, a fake environment. It's an environment that would not exist. Please understand that. In other words, if we could not borrow this cash from the future, we would have not seen that population boom. So we have seen, again, the debt rise in tandem with human population, Greg. We understand, all of us, that the debt is not sustainable. And world central banks are going through very desperate measures to try to keep that debt, this debt bubble sustained. The debt bubble is the greatest threat to humankind, bar none, greater than a nuclear exchange. There is going to be a point where we cannot borrow anymore from the future. When that happens, when we admit that our credit card is maxed out, the debt bubble pops, we get a correction uh, in human population. Again, the fake environment will become real. Millions and millions of people are going to die around the world because there's going to be a scramble for resources because of this, Greg, and war is going to ensue from this again this is unstoppable people are going to say okay well you know what maybe the, the central banks can just print more cash out of thin air or, or add it to a digital screen if they do that you get the same outcome it it devalues the currency we get massive inflation resources do not become available there is no escaping this there's no escaping the fact that we are going to have a massive correction in global population i wrote an article several years ago called Global Debt in the Human Bubble. Just Google that, Global Debt in the Human Bubble. It'll go over these concepts a little more for you, but I can't stress this enough. Forget about ISIS, forget about a nuclear war. This is the greatest threat, period, to humankind. And it plays right into, Greg, the fall of empires, which we spoke about earlier with political corruption and the financial system collapsing around it as well. It's all happening here at the same time. This flood of cash moving into the debt market, uh, uh, monetary metals starting to, they're at the very early stages of a monumental run higher. Um, again, what have I been saying for years upon years, everyone? Bet against this debt and become your own central bank. I can't stress these two points enough. Uh, that means hold these monetary metals. Give the world central banks back their, their paper, which is soon going to be worthless. Understand, this is how this works. Uh, the system is toxic, upside down, backwards and sideways, Greg. Um, it's a frightening situation, but that's the fact that we're in. And I think Wall Street needs to start listening uh, to what is occurring here. They're not listening to the, the warning signs from the bond market. It's not listening to the warning signs from the monetary metals. Uh, it's, they, no one wants to admit that this party is coming to an end. People are going to get wiped out. The middle, when the middle class is invested in 401ks uh, and other investment plans, pensions, they're, they're going to be done. They probably won't survive because many people are not going to survive this. That, that bubble bursting, correction in human population, it's coming with no possible way to stop it. Uh, you had said uh, more than once to me, he says, you know, this this intervention, this money printing, you know, all we have are interventions and money printing. At some point, it's going to turn to poison that the next time they pull something that, that we're always at the brink of, OK, well, this will work. And then, boom, it doesn't. Are we close to this turning to poison that the next rabbit they try to pull out of their their uh, their hat 
uh, is acts actually uh, you know uh, a, a hemlock and and starts killing off people. This is how it's going to play out, Greg. Um, again, forget the stock market, everyone. Don't look at what's occurring in the stock market. Watch the bond market first. Watch the bond yields. The flattening yield curve here in the United States is tremendous. Uh, it, it's a tremendous tell. I've been talking about this a lot on my own blog here. Let's just go over that real quick. The Federal Reserve, by keeping the federal funds rate at zero, is pinning down the short end of the curve. Um, so what's occurring is the phenomenon that I said would happen from a long time ago. The long end of the curve is going to come down. It's going to come down to meet zero. So, again, we're starting to see this, these historic moves two weeks in a row. We have the 30-year bond coming down. Um, historic last, last week, another historic move this week. If the Federal Reserve were to raise the federal funds rate, that would push the short end of the curve higher. We would end up with an inverted yield curve, Greg. The Federal Reserve is well aware of this. We've only seen the inverted yield curve two times before. Top of the dot-com bubble, top of the 2008 bubble. So the Federal Reserve is not going to do anything with regard to interest rates ever. Okay, they're, they're at the end here. They understand this. They're done. If they were to raise, think about it again. If they raise the federal funds rate, what happens? We get this flattening inverted curve. Down comes everything else. That's And they are well aware of this. This is how it's going to play out. But again, again, watch that bond market. This is what's going to happen moving forward. We got this flood of cash moving into the safety of debt right now. Squeezing bond yields, historic lows, negative around the world, banks being bailed out, the Federal Reserve backdoor bailout for the Wall Street banks. It's coming over in the EU. At one particular point, speaking of poison, people are going to realize that the debt is no good. The debt is never can be can never be paid back. So what's going to happen, Greg? There's going to be a massive exodus out of the debt market and it's going to be rapid it's probably going to happen in a matter of days where you're going to see all of this cash that has been rushing towards the debt market get out as fast as they possibly can what is that going to do very simply it's going to spike those bond yields bond yields are going to reach a fair value that's what's going to happen does anyone out here listening to this believe that the debt is actually worth you know what it's paying right now the debt is, debt is worthless it's worthless. It can never be paid back. So the yield should be massively higher. You understand? It's, it's, it's incredible. So the yield will rise. This will cause massive pressure on the stock market, which will sell off rapidly. You get a massive sell off in the bond market. Simultaneous massive sell off here in the stock market. All of this cash is going to move simultaneously into hard assets. Uh, and not just the monetary metals are going to benefit from this, but hard assets across the board are going to um, explode in price moving forward. This, again, is the resource problem we're talking about, how we're going to have massive inflation because of this. This is going to unfold. When? I have no idea. But listen to the bond market. It's trying to warn us. Look at the monetary metals. They are trying to warn us. The stock market is an illusion, which they're going to try to keep real, doing anything possible. Again, let's look at what the Fed did this week, a backdoor bailout for the banks, and no one is talking about it. To prop up the financial system, to try to pull the market higher, who knows if it's going to work. It might work in the short run. I still think my top, and we spoke about this, I was a little leery, but I do believe it's going to hold. It has held for the last 13 months with regard to the Dow, and we're just going to watch that bond market. Don't look at the stock market. Uh, and you you were saying that right from the beginning, the very first interview we ever did was you talked about the population explosion that went right along with the explosion in debt. Uh, you also talked about poison, which you just talked about. And uh, this debt is going to be like Puerto Rican debt, right? I mean, it's just going to be they're never going to pay it. I mean, a lot of these bonds are just they're just going to end up saying, sorry, we can't pay the bonds. Right. I mean, that's just going to that's why this big move into uh, uh, gold and silver, which is going to be enormous at one point, and the whole system's going to shut down, right? Absolutely, Craig. Look, the European debt crisis, it still exists as well. How did they try to fix it? They added more debt to it. Puerto Rico, you name a, 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 a country around the world, we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. We're, we're being swallowed by a financial, a financial monster, Greg, unlike anything the world has ever seen, and that is, is a debt bubble. This debt bubble is going to pop it is going to burst it is a mathematical certainty every single bubble in history economic and financial all have the same common traits just like the fall of empires with the financial system and the pol political system becoming absolutely corrupted these bubbles also have commonalities and that is they rise above a level that can be sustained by any means 
So world central banks colluding with their respective governments can try to prop this up all they want. It's going to reach a critical mass. And then again, just like you said, in Puerto Rico, they can't pay back their debt. The EU can't pay, pay back their debt. Here in the United States, we're in the same boat. All that, what does it mean? It means all this cash is going to leave the bond market, like I said. If it before. can. If it can. You're, you're right. There's going to be no, there's going to be a situation where, again, this is why this, this bursting of this bubble is going to be so rapid. Because, again, if there's going to be people running for the exits, not just in the bond market, but in the stock market, too. Because at one particular point, there's going to be no one to buy. So the first people out the door, those are the ones that are going to take the, le the least damage. And as this accelerates, these are the people down the end here, they're going to be left absolutely destitute. But the monetary metals are going to skyrocket as this happens here. And it's not just that. Again, it's going to be all hard assets, um, commodities, because they are real. Um, the purchasing power of people's cash, their currency, is going to evaporate. So they go, they will go into the, the resource problem once again. There is no escaping this. No amount of money printing, no amount of adding digits to a screen, no amount of any action can stop what is coming. And it's going to be biblical, really. Gregory Manorino, uh, TradersChoice.net. Thanks for taking us to school and bringing us up to speed on all things political. And you stepped in the political ring here talking about how the corruption is is peaking. It's just unbelievable. And, all, and also the bond markets and all that and the backdoor bailouts where the Fed has told the, the banks, yeah, take that money and go ahead and buy your own stock. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely outrageous. Do you think that Deutsche Bank has long to go? I mean, Deutsche Bank is looking like Lehman Brothers did for the last year and a half. I mean, we're right at the last little bit. Do you think Deutsche Bank has long to go or the Italian banks? Is that going to be the trigger that brings it all down? All the banks are insolvent. All the banks are illiquid, all of them. Even the central banks are insolvent and illiquid. Again, going back to what I said earlier, go to the Federal Reserve's own website. There exists 1.4 trillion printed dollars on Earth. That's it. The rest of it exists in the form of credit and debt. That says it all to me. Gregory Manorino, TradersChoice.net. Gregory Manorino, thanks for joining us today on USAWatchdog.com. Thanks, Greg. Really.